Now, it's that time of the year again when pop stars and bands are competing for the coveted Christmas number one. And amongst them are a sprinkling of charity singles. Sonia Jessup has been hearing from a group in Hertfordshire whose aim is to challenge perceptions of people with learning disability whilst empowering lives through music. It looks like Christmas dinner's on Zoom, so we feel like we're all in the room. A song about not wanting to spend Christmas in lockdown, recorded in, well, lockdown. The band and charity Electric Umbrella from Hertfordshire, a mix of professional musicians and adults with learning disabilities. It's Christmas in lockdown. For Jonathan, it's come after a tough year. It was just a lifesaver because obviously I was depressed um, because obviously of lockdown. I got really stressed about it, just staying at home. Just don't want to get anyone ill. Electric Umbrella is my family. It, without them, I wouldn't be able to uh, have my confidence in singing. And I met so many friends. It's so inclusive. Jonathan suffers from depression, high anxiety and OCD but he's found his voice through music. It changed him completely from a very lonely, sad person to an outgoing, uh, amazing, lovely, bouncy person. <laughs> the pandemic's moved Electric Umbrella's live performances online. There have been sing-alongs with guest celebrities like Sophie ellis I saw you crying. Others, like Tony Hadley, joined them for their Christmas single, a song about an experience we all share. The Christmas record and the album is a real depiction of where we are in 2020, uh, particularly if you have a learning disability, but mainly if you are socially isolated in any way. And right now, the world is socially isolated. We are all experiencing what I think a lot of our guys experience every day. They're hoping not just to send the single higher up the Christmas charts, but to reach many more with their work and continue changing lives. Spread the Christmas cheer, it's Christmas. We need to get all happy again. Let's make this the best Christmas in lockdown. Sonia Jessup, BBC London. Well, we saw her briefly in Sonia's report and I'm pleased to say Sophie Ellis-Bexter joins us now. Good to see you and your Christmas tree, I have to say. Um, we heard there, <laughs> we heard there uh, what it means to the people involved, but this is a cause very close to your heart, isn't it? Yeah, so Tom, who you featured there, he's one of the founders and a friend of mine. Um, my friend Sinead also does a lot for Electric Umbrella. It's an amazing charity, brilliant organisation. And yeah, I did one of their, their live um, daily gigs that they've been doing. They've been doing these big sing-alongs every day of the week since the beginning of lockdown. Pretty impressive. So, uh, you know, slightly out of lockdown too, how important is music in, in bringing people together like this? Well, music is the thing that, for me, has sort of kept me the right side of crazy, really. I mean, our family turned to music very early on in lockdown with our kitchen discos. Music's just always the thing I turn to to help me articulate the emotions I have. And actually, it's partly escapism and part catharsis. You know, you can kind of have a rant and get all the stress out mm. while you're dancing around and singing along to songs you love. Well, uh, on that note, you did mention the kitchen disco. So, uh, you know, bringing some feel good and some joy to people during lockdown. Let's just take a look for those that haven't seen it. I said it was feel good. Um, I feel slightly underdressed. No sequins for you. I'm sorry, uh, Sophie. But, you know, we all want a mum like that. Were you surprised by the response? Well, um, yes. I'm sort of surprised by everything that's happened this year, really. Um, and, you know, loads of families are doing what we did here. You know, I think when you're in lockdown, you turn to your family's coping mechanism for when, what happens when times are tough. So for some families, they might be very outdoorsy. For us, we already had, you know, the disco ball, the sequin bunting. We just thought, right, let's have a party. And we're going to do another one on December the 18th with the family again. Like, the kids really love it because it's half an hour of silliness for them. And especially during the first lockdown, 
it was all domesticity except for this bit of disco and it really <laughs> was so vital for us to have a bit of fun and do something a bit daft. And, and what about those, you know, in the music and entertainment industry? Because it is such a tough time, isn't it? Yeah, absolutely. There's so many people. So, oh, can you hear someone's calling me? I've, I've tried to. Yes, Jesse. I was saying marmalade. Oh, okay. We'll talk about marmalade in a minute. Jesse, not now. <laughs> okay. I, yes, there's loads of my colleagues who aren't working, but meanwhile, there's a conversation going on here about marmalade. Bye-bye, Jesse. I said it to Wei, yeah. and Wei said, so are you. Oh, how rude. <laughs> and, and, that, and that means I'm... And that means I'm trash. You're not trash, Jess. <laughs> You're great. Yeah. All right. No okay. worries, Sophie. I think I think you are you are needed very much uh, by We're the family. The but same thank. Colour as my jumper, yeah. <laughs> but thank you so much for sparing some time to talk to us and for bringing joy with all your kitchen discos. Thank you. Sorry, I didn't hide very successfully, did I? Yeah. <laughs> Thanks very much, Sophie Ellis Baxter. There.